Welcome to this NSL Season 2 Grand Finals and a European League with our Kier and Gordor starting on the map NSL Summit. We see the Marines starting our Kier in the left, going with 3 2 split, no one crossroads, and the aliens going for 1 RT opening. Yeah, we're seeing the three Marines moving up in, two in crevice. Actually, three in crevice building that up. They're going to move into Atrium where a blueprint is dropped. Alcalde's there, um, just up against the walls. Going to see these two sneak in here. The cis chain for Godar moved into reactor core and ventilation where there is a blueprint down there. Oh, wow, and they do catch Alcalde <laughs> right in the corner. Poor guy, and Fan and Kuruyu move into Atrium. I really love it. Goda did watch the recent Arkea games when Arkea did completely not go to crossroads at all, which leaves a spot opening for the aliens to go straight in the base. We saw just one Skull trying it out, one Marine close back to defend that, no big problem. But this is still a little bit risky now. Um, if you have like four Skulls, just go bypass them. The Marines were not sure at all where those Skulls all have been, so they could have gone for the base there. Yeah, and we're seeing now Skugan and Tane in Computer Lab playing a little cat and mouse with Ice Belt. Grissy, Grissy makes a move out of the vents, takes down Tane in a couple bites. Skugan now firing down this hallway against Ice Belt, who's moving le strafing left and right to try to get away from those bullets. I don't know when he's actually going to make his move, but Skugan knows he's got to <laughs> hold off until he gets some reinforcements, which Tane is coming back for some revenge. That's a pretty passive opening so far. Now here the first pressure approach, Reactor Core, three Marines, one already down, we can split up from the group. Only one Gorge and one Skulk, some Hydras in there, it's too tough to go in versus two Marines, they have to wait for a little bit back up here. Yep, Hyval betting, uh, belly sliding in, building up uh, more Hydras in there, Kuryu and Fana firing down in there, Alcalde coming up to back up Valk, who's going to be defense there, and we see that um, these two Marines, Skugan and Tain. Skugan coming in through the vents, about to get Grissy, but Grissy moves off just in time, meeting Eagle Eye. I always feel I am looking somewhere else than you are. There's <laughs> action all over. And here we see there two Skugs are now moving in the base. Um, on the IP, we have no spawner. The commander has to log out. Grimes out of the chair. Two oh! Guys, they took him out. Oh, this is a big loss. Oh my god, there is no IPs left. Five oh, Marines goodness. alive. If Just they can kill these marines... No, that's not gonna happen. I oh, never mind, it was Fana and Eagle Eye coming back, but yeah. it still did good amounts of damage here. They lost the Harvester in ventilation, but it killed an IP, forced two marines come Whoa. back, killed the commander. Look at what he dropped! He dropped... Two... Two armories? Two armories? Three armories? What what is going oh on? no, it was an accident! <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh. gosh! Instead of dropping two IPs, he dropped two armories! <laughs> oh yeah, there was... Oh god, he oh, missed up the no. hotkeys. And you can see there was Eagle Eye jumping the chair yeah. because Grime was dead. And Eagle Eye is definitely not a used commander, so he... No, 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 it was like... Fana that jumped in first. Ah, it was Fana. Dropped okay. it and then got out and let Eagle Eye do it. <laughs> oh boy, and here comes Mendaz, Vok, and Alcalde! <laughs> Through some reception into flight control! Uh, Eagle Eye going down! Ooh, this is getting close. Still three aliens alive. Two pretty low on health, so they should be fine spawning in, defending them. And you know what? A great job, um, Scram, basically spawning and running down to, the, to that south side of flight control to put distance between him and those, and those skulls so he can take them down pretty easily. Oh yeah, I mean, this was a lot of passive gameplay all over. We see two, only two RTs up for Goda. They really try to play safe with that. They already lost ventilation by trying to grab out a little bit more greedy. But all those kind of base rushes keep Arkea really back in the base. Which is not hurting them too much in general because they still defend everything they have. Look at that, five up extractors, two more on the way. So if you can keep this rest game as it is, five versus two half of the stars. And maybe even getting more extractors. They will be in a pretty good game spot later on. And we know Arkea loves the macro game. They don't want to win early, they just want to win solid. Eliminate random factors throughout the game. Just try to position themselves best as they can. Try to prevent those base rushes happening. Not even, it doesn't always work, but they try the best. Over in Reactor Core, we got uh, the Dream Team, Tane and Fana walking in there, taking down Valk. Highball is the only one left. Mendas coming in from the south to try to engage this. He gets backed up by Grissy, and now they're trying to push Fana and Tane back into flight control. Fane and Tana do go down. 
They're gonna kind of move in there. We got Skugan and in, in ventilation taking down the harvester. Alcalde responding, taking him out. But uh, Godar a little bit back on this on this res game, as you mentioned. Yeah, they actually managed to defend ventilation. They're still eagle eye down in the south, trying to get some res I'm Look at that. They killed zero extractors the whole game. I mean, this is Godar. Like the best respider yeah. <laughs> team in the world, and it killed zero <laughs> extractors. That just shows how the positioning of Akira works out so far. Uh, this is just great, even with all the combat. And look at the upgrades. You already have shotguns up, you have weapon one up, and armor two on the way. And this is again this armor two timing strike really lost versus the early scout play, which gives the moraine an edge here. And you should be fine getting weapon two as well when it fades off. Oh. See that Grissy is, um, you know, has gone lurk. He's he's their he's Godar's main lurk, attacking Fana and Skugan down in sub axis. Gets pushed back a little bit. Sticky Moraine trying to get up reactor. Two Moraine hitting at the same time ventilation. This could be a big deal here, big blow towards the aliens losing two officers at the same time. Godar has to choose what to do, what side to defend. Shotgun and ventilation is pretty tough to break, so they tried. Mendas tried to went for Tane, but a 1v1 engagement versus a play like Tane, not always a good idea. The Lurk can do definitely better here. Nice med pack drop in there by Scram. Grissy really kind of needs to be careful here. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely wise to get out of that engagement. Wasn't making any headway with those med pack drops, and over time, Tane will tag him. Yeah, they needed the time better. The scout mend us before. We should have waited for the lurk to come in. Together, they would have easily taken it out like they do right now. Now it's easy play. One Moraine down. And Reactor safe. And we actually see the Atrium Hive has been claimed here at about around the 7 minute mark. So I think that that is not a big deal for the Moraines. The big problem for Akira is the fade timing by Godor. We know this 4 fade play by Godor is pretty strong. And that's why they're trying to keep up this pressure as it is right now. They killed 2 Harvesters versus just 2 Extractors lost. Um, rest game goes slightly in the favor of Akira here. Oh, did, I completely agree. They, they uh, Scram knows, and like you said, the fade plosion that Godar does. Um, he needs to delay that, and you know they've been sitting on you know two RTs for quite a while. They popped the three for just a bit, and then back down to two. Um, so he's definitely delaying that fade game, um, and hopefully gain a lot of map control while he can delay that. But if Godar is allowed to do their you know standard, Godar's standard anyways for fade play, then Arkea may be in trouble. But it looks like they're teching up for that. They're already at armor two, and weapons two is coming out pretty soon. That oh, RT the carapace shell just goes down. Uh, interrupting you there, the marine that just stayed so long alive here inside data core. They just <laughs> took down the carapace shell. Was looking the whole time for that, and before the aliens could, could clear it out, they just emptied the clip on it, took it down before they died. Really great job so far. Got immediately redrop, but it's a great loss for all the spawning skulks. It will be weak for a longer time. And yeah, also hitting those extractors. So Arkea is doing fairly good here. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of pressure up in Atrium. Karyu, um tagging that new hive. Eagle Eye and Fana now coming in there. Oh boy. <laughs> Eagle Eye, the only one left. He's going to be backing off. Grissy is trying to stab him off. Ice Belt doing a little bit of RT harassing in sub access. And another Marine, Skugan, comes into Atrium to back Eagle Eye up. With shotguns, Grissy's got to get out of there. <laughs> yeah, he has to watch out. He has to stay distance for sure, but the problem is this hive will die. There's not even aliens here. They're not even caring about it. They know the hive is lost. They went for our teeth to see a skulk in ventilation. Skulk took down computer lab. No chance to save this one now. They have to just digest on a loss, keep the rest game going, and try to get those fades on the way. Godar was using a drifter to do some damage to the ventilation RT for like a while. It was pretty good. <laughs> Three Marines now up in Atrium, Kareo, Skuggin, and Eagle Eye. They have definitely taken that. I like that. Look at that. Panar is close to the base. He's sitting. I mean, he died. But three Marines, Reactor Core, one Ventilation. This leaves a spot for base rushes. I mean, we do have a be uh, an Ops right now, ready to beacon, but he never want to beacon. It's 10 T-Res and the whole map control is gone for the moment, mm -hmm. especially without phase gates. You need a lot of time to get back in the field. Um, that's why they have still this Moraine, I think, around the base. Yeah, there's one on base. Wild Reactor Core, lots of action going on. 
Yeah, Eagle Eye and Karuda taking out Ivol, um, and Grissy down in the corner again, just trying to use that Lurk to, you know, his advantage, but um, keeps getting pushed back. Skuga now walking into Atrium, Sis Chain cut for Crossroads. They're going to need to reestablish that before it starts doing damage. Tain over in Data Core. He gets taken out, nice job, pure by Godor. But still, our here is heavy on pressure, there's no way to save Reactico. The Marines will just stand here and camp it. Kill assists camp around the corners, Lurk can't do too much damage, he cannot fly in at all. There's no chance for Grizzly to get in here right now. So, big play by Akira, look at the positioning, one around the corner, one a little bit more in the back. And it's gonna be really tough to break it, especially if the Skulls run in alone. Look at that, like, Volk. Yep. Volk taking that, trying to take Eagle Eye <coughs> and Karoo on. Um, look at this, I mean, they're gonna be in Reactor Core, um, and just start... Yep, it looks like they're gonna go through Glass Hallway, start breaking these Sis and go into Data Core. A little skirmish happening in Crossroads. Uh, Tane and Fana there taking down the Harvester there. Icefelt down in sub access doing a little bit of RT harassing and the RT harassing happening in Crevice. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, Karu and Eagle Eye are moving closer and closer to Data Core and Godar is getting pinched. And yeah, I love what they do. They're not moving in, they're just staying outside, keep the aliens busy. So the aliens cannot really leave the hive too far. Um, that moment those two shotgunners will go and deal several damage, really. Um, so they have, to, they have to decide, will they clear it up, but running into two, two shotguns in this area is so dangerous. And now they're about to leave, there's just still two skulls back at home trying to defend it. But it's gonna be really hard. Now there's three marines, they waited for this time, here they go, the drifter spots it. But not too much around here, just one oh skull and one lurk, and this carapace shell. Oh, they could die. Yeah, they are coming in here with some of their best shooters. We got Karuyu, Eagle Eye, and Skugan, all with shotguns. Weapon 2 shotguns. Armor 3 is on its way. And Eagle Eye and Karuyu lived through that onslaught, and now they... Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> Grissy trying oh boy, to save no. himself. Oh, and Grissy goes down. Tane now comes, and this is it. Egglock, this and there it. we go. Oh, what a timing wow. by Kiel. You know the place where like 49 Pyrrhus, 49 Pyrrhus, 4 Fates, so surely to pop out. It just needed to hold us a little bit longer. Leaving the Hive right this, Akira did a great. And though the Goat deserved, well deserved, in late 1 GO here right now. I have to say, Gordor they didn't play like I know Gordor. You know, there, there went a lot of 1v many in here. I, s I saw a lot of Skulks just go straight into Marine. Ah, there was. I hope the specs saw my armor. See if we did fun out <laughs> with this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so really cool.